بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم کورس فنڈامنٹل آف کمپیوٹرز کورس کوڈ ایٹ فور زیرو تھری لیول بی بی اے یونٹ ٹو سینگ ہیئرنگ پرنٹنگ اینڈ پروسیسنگ ڈیٹا سی آر ٹی مانیٹرز شارٹ فار کیتھر ری ٹیو A CRT is the electron beams in a monitor that move across your screen either interlaced or non-interlaced. Hitting phosphor dots on the inside glass tube, the picture is an example of the inside of a computer monitor that shows the CRT connected to the screen. In the CRT are three electron guns, red green and blue each of these guns streams a steady flow of electrons left to right for each line of your monitor as the electrons hit the phosphors on the CRT the phosphor will glow certain intensities as a new line begins the guns will then begin at the left and continue right These guns will repeat this process sometime thousand of times until the screen is completely drawn line by line. Once the phosphors on the CRT have been hit with an electron, they only glow for a short period of time. Because of this, the CRT must be refreshed, which means the process will be repeated as explained above. If the video card's refresh rate is not set high enough, you may encounter a flicker or a noticeable steady line scrolling from the top to the bottom of your screen. Other type of monitors. PC monitors come in two different flavors, each of which is known by a popular TLA, three letter acronym, LCD and CRT. LCD stands for liquid crystal display, the newer, flatter type of computer screen. CRT stands for cathode ray tube, the traditional glass screen, television set like monitor. Between the two, the LCD monitor is more popular. The prices on LCD monitors have dropped dramatically in recent years not to mention that the monitors are easy on the eyes and use less electricity than their glass based counterparts video card a video card connects to the motherboard of a computer system and generates output images to display video cards are also referred to as graphic cards Video cards include a processing unit, memory, a cooling mechanism, and connections to a display device. A video card is a printed circuit board like a motherboard and contains its own processing unit and memory. This essentially takes the load of the motherboard CPU and memory to process images. The processing unit on a video card is referred to as a graphics processing unit GPU. This is very similar to a CPU, but its design is optimized to work with images. The memory on a video card is very similar to the regular random access memory or RAM on a motherboard. A video card connects to the motherboard of a computer system using a slot. Typically an accelerated graphics port, AGP or a peripheral component interconnect express PCIe connection. High performance video cards generate a lot of heat. Video cards therefore need to employ heat sinks which consist of metal strips to distribute the heat evenly and dissipate the heat into the surrounding air. A heat sink is often located right on top of the GPU, 
Sometimes a fan is added for additional cooling. You can see the two different video cards on your screen. One is a low performance video card, the other is a high performance video card. You can easily differentiate between these two cards by telling which is high perform. A high performance video card has a fan on its top. It, this fan helps this card to cool down when necessary. Ergonomics and Monitors Ergonomics is the science of designing machines, products and systems to maximize the safety, comfort and efficiency of the people who use them. It is the means by which people and machines work together as one unit. Ergonomics focuses on highlighting the strengths and compensating for the weaknesses of each component within the system. Both human and mechanical, designing a work area with ergonomics in mind may help reduce workplace accidents and injuries. Adjust the monitor height so that the top of the screen is at your slightly below eye level. Your eye should look slightly downward when viewing the middle of the screen. Position the monitor no closer than 20 inches from your eyes. A good rule of thumb is an arm's length distance. The larger your screen, the more distance you will want. Adjust the screen position to eliminate glare from windows and ceiling light. If lighting permits, tilt the monitor back 10 degree to 20 degree. This maintains the distance between your eyes and the screen as you scan it from top to bottom. Exception if using bifocals, lower the monitor below eye level and turn screen upward tilting it back 30 degree to 45 degree. Sound system. Sound system is the name used to designate speakers, amplifiers, music sources. The choice of the system depends on the desired area to install it and also the type of application intended. There are basically three types of sound systems. Environmental, professional, high fidelity. Speakers are one of the most common output device used with computer systems. Some speakers are designed to work specifically with computers, while others can be hooked up to any type of sound system. Regardless of their design, the purpose of speakers is to produce audio output that can be heard by the listener. Sound card. A sound card is an expansion component used in computers to receive and send audio. Sound cards are configured and utilized with the help of a software application and a device driver. The input device attached to receive audio data is usually a microphone, while the device used to output audio data is generally speakers or headphones. The sound card converts incoming digital audio data into analog audio so that the speakers can play it. In the reverse case, the sound card can convert analog audio data from the microphone into digital data that can be stored on the computer and altered using audio software. Sound cards are also known as audio adopters. Printers a printer is an external output device that takes data from a computer and generates output in the form of graphics or text on a paper. There are two types of printers. Impact printers. An impact printer makes contact with the paper. It usually forms the print image by pressing a link ribbon against the paper using a hammer or pins. Following are some examples of impact printers. Dot matrix printer, line printer, drum printer. Non-impact printers. 
non impact printers do not use a stacking device to produce characters on the paper and because these printers do not hammer against the paper they are much quieter following are some non impact printers laser jet printers and ink jet printers the two printers that you see on your screen are widely used all across the world for printing documents or images how computer process data data processing is the most basic function of a computer this function is performed by the central processing unit cpu which consists of electronic circuits that can read and execute code instructions to perform a wide range of tasks from performing complex mathematical calculations to storing the entries in a database the cpu can be seen as the brain of the computer accepting input data and instructions executing commands storing results in memory and sending data to output devices it controls the sequence of operations and the use of data storage in addition to the cpu some of the processing function of a computer may be performed by an arithmetic logic unit alu which performs arithmetic and binary logic operations or a graphic processing unit gpu that's responsible for creating graphical output that displays data in visual form gaming computers are heavily dependent on gpus to generate complex dynamic graphics below diagram will help you to understand how a computer process data factors affecting processing speed following are some important factors that may affect the processing speed of a computer registers ram system clock buses cache memory registers the cpu contains of small memory areas called registers which store data and instructions while the cpu processes them The size of the registers determines the amount of data with which the computer can work at at one time. Today, most PCs have 32 bit registers, mean the CPU can process 4 bytes data at one time. Register sizes are rapidly growing to 64 bits. RAM. The amount of RAM in a PC has a direct effect on the system speed. The more RAM a PC has, the more program instructions and data can be held in memory, which is faster than storage on disk. If a PC does not have enough memory to run a program, it must move the data between RAM and the hard disk frequently. This process called swapping can greatly slow a PC's performance. The system clock The computer system clock sets the pace the CPU by using a vibrating quartz crystal. A single tick of the clock is the time required to turn a transistor off and back on. This is called a clock cycle. The faster a PC's clock runs, the more instructions the PC can execute each second. The bus A bus is a path between the components of a computer. Data and instructions travel along these paths. The data bus bit determines how many bits can transmitted between the CPU and other devices. The address bus runs only between the CPU and RAM and carries nothing but the memory addresses for the CPU to use. peripheral devices are connected to the cpu by an expansion bus cache memory cache memory is high speed memory that holds the most recent data and instructions that have been loaded by the cpu cache is located directly on the cpu or between the cpu and ram making it faster than normal ram The amount of cache memory has a tremendous impact on the computer speed. Memory. 
The CPU contains the basic instructions needed to operate the computer, but it cannot store entire programs or large sets of data permanently. The CPU needs to have billions, even trillions in some computers or bytes of space where it can quickly read or write programs and data while they are being used. This area is called memory and it consists of chips either on the motherboard or on a small circuit board attached to the motherboard. This electronic memory allows the CPU to store and retrieve data quickly. Volatile versus non-volatile memory. Memory can be either volatile or non-volatile. Volatile memory is a memory that loses its contents when the computer or hardware device loses power. Computer RAM is an example of a volatile memory and is why if your computer freezes or reboots when working on a program, you lose anything that hasn't been saved. Non-volatile memory, sometimes abbreviated as NVRAM, is a memory that keeps its content even the power is lost. EP-ROM is an example of a non-volatile memory. What is a computer bus? The electrically conducting path along which data is transmitted inside any digital electronic device, a computer bus consists of a set of parallel conductors which may be conventional wires, copper tracks on a printed circuit board, or microscopic aluminium trails on the surface of a silicon chip. Each wire carries just one bit, so the number of wires determines the largest data word the bus can transmit. A bus with 8 wires can carry only 8-bit data words and hence defines the device as an 8-bit device. A computer bus normally has a single word memory circuit called a latch attached to either end which briefly stores the word being transmitted and ensures that each bit has settled to its intended state before its value is transmitted. The computer bus helps the various parts of the PC commu communicate. If there was no bus, you would have an unwidely number of wires connecting every part to every other part. It would be like having separate wiring for every light bulb and socket in your house. There are variety of buses found inside computer. Data bus. The data bus allows data to travel back and forth between the microprocessor, CPU and memory RAM. Address bar. The address bus carries information about the location of a data in memory. Control bus. The control bus carries the control signals that make sure everything is flowing smoothly from place to place. Expansion bus. If your computer has expansion slots, there's an expansion bus. Messages and information pass between your computer and the add-in boards you plug in over the expansion bus. Below is the diagram of how control, address and data bus work together. Microprocessor A microprocessor is a component that performs the instructions and tasks involved in computer processing. In a computer system, the microprocessor is the central unit that executes and manages the logical instructions passed to it. A microprocessor may also be called a processor or central processing unit, but it is actually more advanced in terms of architectural design and is built over a silicon microchip. extending processing power to the other devices. All the components of the computer are tied into CPU by bus, can plug the device into existing sockets or ports. If no ports available, then install a board that includes the required ports. Specialized expansion ports. 
If the PC does not have a port for an external devices, we can install an expansion board into one of the empty expansion slots. A board provides the correct port for the new device and connects the device to the CPU by way of the computer's expansion bus. Thank you. That sums up the second unit.